Hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutek, and today we'll be talking about Apple's newest phone, the iPhone SE, and why I think it is actually worth it. Now, if you remember one of my older videos called 2018 iPhones Are Failures from a year ago, you'll know that I am not the biggest fan of Apple. I used to be, but then they started falling behind, frankly, and making some really crappy decisions with their iPhones in terms of design and new introduced features. But recently they made a really great one with the release of this new phone. Now it doesn't have any new features, but its price point says a lot. We'll be covering the new SE's specs, such as battery life, processor performance, camera, and other things you typically talk about when reviewing a phone, and why it is worth the $400 it's priced at. Now before we get started, I would really, really appreciate it if you checked out my channel. I upload tech videos usually relating to PC gaming. Also, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like comment if you have any comments or questions as the video goes along and be sure to drop a sub if you enjoy the content you're seeing now let's get straight into it talking about the specs of this new phone to start let's talk about the screen it has the same typical 4.7 inch retina hd display that is 1334 by 750 pixels not the best display it is the same one you find in the base size iphone 6 7 and 8 so it's clearly not an upgrade but for 400 dollars coming from apple it'll do Next up, the biggest surprise, the processor. The phone uses the same exact chip as the iPhone 11, which, let me remind you, is the fastest phone processor currently on the market. To put this into perspective, this is kind of like having the engine of a Bugatti Chiron in a Toyota sedan. The Toyota may not have all the fancy gimmicks and luxury features that a Bugatti Chiron has, but that thing can drive faster than any other car in the road. This honestly is probably the selling point of this phone. You get the same snappiness, game performance, and loading times of the iPhone 11 for over half of its starting price. That to me is pretty amazing and really unexpected of Apple. They seriously could have put this phone up for 100, even 200 more dollars than it is now, and it would have been a normal price for them. Anyways, back to the specs. Next up, let's talk about the camera. As expected, this phone is portrait mode. It's not the actual portrait mode you get from having a dual camera though. It's software assisted portrait mode. It's still pretty good, but you won't have the same results as you would in iPhone X, XS, or 11. You of course also get the 4K video recording. I'm 99% sure this is the same exact camera you find on the iPhone 8, and that is not a bad thing for 400 bucks. Unless you're a photographer or have some serious obsession over having perfect image colors and quality, then this camera will be perfectly fine. The phone also comes with touch ID as expected, the unrivaled security measures and encryption built into the software of the phone, and IP67 water resistance, which by the way, means it's dust resistant and can survive under one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. A big shocker here is how this iPhone has dual SIM. Apple put in the measures to have this phone have dual SIM capabilities, which is pretty surprising. For comparison, the iPhone 8 did not have this. Next up, that battery. It is a 1,821 milliamp hour battery, which is the same exact size as the iPhone 8, which is a good thing. The iPhone 8 has a phenomenal battery that usually lasts all day, according to a few of my pals that have this phone, so battery isn't something you should worry about. In comparison, the iPhone 11 has a 3046 milliamp hour battery, but this battery is meant to be a bit extra, and on top of that, it is supposed to support higher resolution, more background processes, and higher brightness, among other things. So if you've ever owned an iPhone 7 or 8, it'll be a very similar experience if you're planning on getting an iPhone SE. Now, I have owned an iPhone 7 for a few years before upgrading a year back to the 10s, and the battery was very reliable and long-lasting throughout the day, so to think that the SE should be a bit better than that is very promising. For the storage options, it has 64 gigabytes, 128 gigabytes, and 256 gigabytes. And I have a 64 gigabyte iPhone XS, which is already more than enough. So storage is not an issue at all with the base model of this phone. Finally, the physical part of things. What I really like about this phone is how Apple introduced brand new colors. They didn't go ahead and recycle old colors to make things easier for themselves, but they change it up a bit. Colors are pretty straightforward. You get black, white, and red. These are a lot better because the black is darker than the usual space gray, and the white is brighter than the typical silver that you find in the iPhone 7 and 8. I honestly prefer these colors simply because they pop out more. Also, the red color hasn't changed, but that is expected. Unfortunately, this phone comes with Apple's 5-watt charger, yes. Of course, Apple couldn't help themselves from putting this piece of junk charger with their phone. But to be fair, this is the cheap iPhone, and I honestly didn't have big expectations, and they already blew me away a bit, so I'll let this one slide. 
If you want your iPhone SE to utilize that fast charging it's capable of, you'll need to have you'll have to go buy one yourself. So the final verdict, is this phone worth it? For me, it's a 100% yes. For $400, a budget smartphone price, you are getting the fastest processor on the market right now, among other things. That alone is the biggest selling point, but you also get the dual SIM, the great battery life, and the new refresh colors, which I really like. And of course, it's a real cheap price for Apple. I never expected something this nice from Apple for so cheap, so this is a sure deal. So that'll do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video about smartphones and want to see more of it, drop a comment, let me know. I don't really do smartphone videos very often or cover Apple products, but if you enjoyed this one, drop a comment, let me know. Also, if you enjoy the content, make sure you drop a sub, it really helps out the channel. And if you have any other types of comments or questions, be sure to drop a comment. Thanks for watching. Peace out.